Welcome to a candidate forum featuring candidates for Citrus Heights City Council. I'm Suzanne Finney, a member of the League of Women Voters of Sacramento County and the moderator for today's forum. This forum is co-sponsored by the League of Women Voters of Sacramento County and the Sacramento Metropolitan Cable Television Commission. The forum is being viewed live by an audience in the Sacramento Board of Supervisors Chambers and by a live cable television audience at home. It is also being taped for rebroadcast on Metro Cable Channel 14. The League of Women Voters is a nonpartisan, nonprofit organization of women and men established to promote political responsibility through informed, active participation in government. The League does not support, oppose, or evaluate political candidates or parties. Although our nonpartisanship policy does not permit endorsement of political candidates, we do, after careful study, take positions on political issues. The format for today's forum will be as follows. Each candidate will make a one-minute opening statement. Next, the candidates will respond to questions from our panelists. The questions were submitted by our panelists and reviewed by League members. Since we have a number of candidates participating in our forum, several speakers will be allowed a one-minute answer, although not all speakers will answer each question. However, all candidates will have equal speaking time in the forum. And I will try to direct at least one question where all candidates will have an opportunity to answer a question that may not have been posed to them if they so wish. Finally, the candidates will have a one minute uh, time to make a closing statement. And in the interest of time and decorum, I'd ask our audience um, to hold all applause until the end of the forum. Now I would like to introduce the candidates who are running for Citrus Heights City Council. I'll be starting to my far right with James Aiello. Nope, James Remick. Excuse me. And then James Aiello. And Jeannie Bruins, Laura Taylor, and Steve Miller. Good morning. Thank you. Um, and uh, we appreciate you coming to uh, be with us today for this forum. I'd like to introduce Lakeisha McGee with the Sacramento Bee, who will be posing the questions to our panelists. And thank you for participating. And now we're ready to begin with opening statements. Again, one minute each, and we'll start with James Remick. Hello, I'd like to thank the League for the invitation and I'd like to introduce myself. My name is James Remick. I live in the city of Citrus Heights and I'd like to keep this short and sweet. I think it's time for a change for our city and a new direction. Thank you very much. Thank you, that was short and sweet. Now we'll have the opening statement by James Aiello. I'm on the opening state and just going to give you my history. I'm a Korean War veteran and a member of the Veterans of Foreign Wars. I'm the former chief of police for two cities, the former director of transportation and risk management for a school district, have a lifetime community college teaching certificate in police science, and I have an associate membership in the California State Sheriff's Association, and I hold the National Rifle Association League of Honor and I'll answer the other questions as the rest. We may have lots of time for questions then. And now we'll have the opening statement by Jeannie Bruins. Good morning. I'd like to thank the League for giving us this opportunity to address the public. Before I begin my opening remarks, I would like to let you know that Council Member James Shelby is unable to be with us this morning because he was detained out of state and he sends his regrets. I've been involved in the city of Citrus Heights since I moved here 22 years ago. Was an active member of the business community from the beginning, a board member of the Chamber of Commerce, eventually president in 1989. During those years, um, I, helped, I worked to help create Citrus Heights and make it a city. I was hired by the chamber in 1993 and I led the campaign for cityhood in 1996. It's been my honor to serve the citizens of Citrus Heights for the last four years, and I look forward to another four years so that we can continue to improve our community and make it the best city possible in the county. Thank you. 
Thank you very much, and thank you also for making that announcement about James Shelby. It was on my list of notes, and it got overlooked, so I appreciate that. And now we'll have the opening statement by Laura Taylor. Good morning. I'm Laura Taylor, and I'm a candidate for Citrus Heights City Council. I want to take a moment and thank the League of Women Voters for this opportunity to speak to the people of Citrus Heights. I'm blessed to be able to participate in this forum today. Citrus Heights is a beautiful city and a great place to live and raise a family. There have been many positive changes in the Citrus, city of Citrus Heights since we became a city, but as we approach our 10-year anniversary, it's time to reassess our goals and map out a new direction for our city. It's time for fresh, new leadership and new faces on the council. It's time for accountability and transparency in local government. As your council member, this is my commitment to you. With my long history of public service and involvement in our community, I'm ready, willing, and able to serve the people of Citrus Heights. Thank you. And then our last opening statement will be given by Steve Miller. Good morning, and thank you for being here today. Thank you to the League of uh, Women's Voters for uh, this forum. And for those of you tuning in to watch, uh, it's good to be educated on uh, who the candidates are. I'd like to uh, tell you that I have a lovely wife, Nanette. We've been married for 22 years, and we've lived in Citrus Heights for over 20 years. We have two children currently in college. And I currently serve on the City Council, where I've gained valuable experience and developed relationships with local, state, and national leaders. My council duties have included serving on the government and quality of life subcommittees. I'm a commissioner in the Sacramento Metropolitan Cable Commission, and I've completed the California League of Cities Council Member in Mayor's Leadership course. I'm also currently serving on the Board of Directors of the Chamber of Commerce, and I'm a board member for my neighborhood association, and also serve on the board for the Citrus Heights Lions Club. Before the council, I was the vice chair of the Law Enforcement Citizens Advisory Committee that made the recommendation to form our own police department, and I graduated from the inaugural class of Leadership Citrus Heights in 2004, which really stoked my interest in getting involved at a higher level in Citrus Heights. Thank and, you. Thank you. <laughs> and now uh, that concludes our opening statement portion of the forum, and we're going to move right into the question and answers. And so, Lakeisha, will you direct the first question, which will be answered by Laura, Jeannie, and Steve? Okay. Citrus Heights is set to celebrate its 10th anniversary as a city next year. What changes, if any, would you most like to see happen in the city in the next 10 years? Thank you, and we'll start with Laura. Thank you, thank you, Lakeisha. We have, as I said in my opening statement, had a lot of positive improvements in the city, um, but there's still room for improvement. One of the areas that I see a need for change is in the area of uh, animal control and regulation. Um, it's currently been a hot button issue on the county level with regard to registration of animals, with regard to um, the euthanasia rate in our community. And I think uh, that this is something we're going to have to address locally in Citrus Heights in the next four years. So that would be one issue. We've also got to look at the long term viability of our financial situation. It's um, alarming to me that we will start drawing down on our reserve in the year 2012, that that's the projected drawdown date. That worries me, and we need to come up with a more comprehensive plan to address the future needs of our city. Thank you. Jeannie? I believe our focus in the next 10 years really needs to shift to our business community. We've seen a lot of development within our residential community. Um, We've also seen a lot of services that have been enhanced and provided for residences that have not, uh, were not provided for us as a, as a county uh, territory. However, all of that is funded um, in large part by our business community. And we've seen a lot of development around us and so our focus needs to be uh, in the area of helping our business community not only to remain viable, but to move forward at a pace that produces revenue uh, in, an, in advance of the needs that we have to use that revenue. And I think that's going to be a very important focus in the years to come. Part of that is to bring viable jobs into Citrus Heights that not only allows for sales tax dollars to be raised, but allows for people to have positions that give them the opportunity to spend those dollars in Citrus Heights and to thrive. Thank you very much. Thank you. And now to Steve. Well. I believe that we, we need to continue making sound financial 
uh, decisions to protect the, um, our city. And our economic engine is our marketplaces, and I do believe we need to look at investing and improving and renewing and revitalizing our businesses uh, to help spur uh, uh, retail growth and bring in some major retailers into our marketplaces. Uh, we have an untapped uh, an untapped uh, consumers in the surrounding areas of Carmichael, Orange Vale, uh, as well as Citrus Heights. And instead of driving past our um, stores and businesses in Citrus Heights, uh, we hope to capture those with uh, looking at uh, improving our business district. Thank you. Lakeisha. Your next question will be addressed by James Aiello, James Remick, and Laura Taylor. Okay. Let's see. A recent study of regional sales tax dollars found that Citrus Heights lagged behind Roseville, Folsom, and Rancho Cordova in average sales per capita. Do you support city funding to help increase sales tax revenues? Please explain why or why not. I don't support city funding on anything. It's a, that's a duty of the taxpayer to support it him themselves. We're low, we're low in sales tax because of funding taken from us by the city council for years to come. We should be fighting that and getting that sales tax and property tax back. And if I make city council, we will take, take a look at how that can be done. Thank you, James. I don't support the city government being involved in um, increasing the revenue by increasing sales tax. Um, I do support reaching out to our businesses and encouraging them to um, to expand and to further their their reach in the in the other communities surrounding us. The it's extremely important for Citrus Heights to, to realize that we are a built out city. And I would also want to reach out to the public to educate them so that they're aware that spending that dollar at Jamba Juice on Sunrise Boulevard is more viable for the city's existence than to go up to Douglas and spend it. So I think a general education plan to let the city of Citrus, the citizens of Citrus Heights know how important it is to keep the money in our city. Thank you, and Laura. Well, I'd like to kind of dovetail on what um, Mr. Remick said, um, and I think our Chamber of Commerce has done a fantastic job in educating our community and letting them know that they need to shop Citrus Heights and why. Um, I think one of the things that we can do as a city council is to continue and expand our partnerships with the local self-assessment districts like the Sunrise Marketplace. It has been um, an extremely profitable partnership for the city. Um, and when you consider the um, amount, small amount of tax dollars infused into the Sunrise Marketplace and the huge return on our investment, I believe that it is a very positive alternative for us to consider doing this with other areas and other retail districts within our city. The self-assessment district shows our merchants' commitment to the viability of our city. And I think as a council and as citizens, we need to support that. And I think we need to partner with them. And that's probably the best way to help increase our tax revenues, our sales tax revenues. Thank you. And Lakeisha, the next um, question is going to be answered by Steve, Jeannie, and James Ayel. Do you support high density development and affordable housing in Citrus Heights? Why or why not? And Steve? Well, I support it in the proper places and we are a built out city that uh, has very little room for developments. And so it has to match the, the character of the neighborhoods and, and it is very difficult um, with being built out to find appropriate places and we have a number of, of issues coming up. Uh, I do not support upzoning uh, lands and surrounding communities. 
rather um, looking at uh, building the, the higher densities around the marketplaces uh, with mixed use where it's appropriate uh, so that we can have uh, folks that live and work and shop in the same area. Thank you. Thank you. Jeannie? I do support affordable housing because it is the law and it is also our social responsibility to provide affordable housing for low income and very low income people. We have affordable housing that already exists in Citrus Heights and as our population continues to grow, we will continue to look at um, our requirement to provide affordable housing to a segment of the population. Some of that affordable housing will be in the form of high density housing. High density housing is um, not a bad thing for a community if it is well designed and if it is well thought out. We already have high density housing in many of our neighborhoods, including the beautiful segment of Citrus Heights known as Crosswoods. And so I believe that a community not only can survive, but can thrive with both of these elements in their community if they are intelligently designed and planned for. Thank you. And James? I'm, I'm totally against affordable housing, except in certain areas, as, as Mr. Miller stated. I don't know if any of you can remember back in the 50s when we did affordable housing to, br to, up, to bring up the poor. All it did was tear down the neighborhood. We have sections now that were good neighborhoods that now are not. And the same thing will happen to Citrus Heights. We already have affordable housing. It's already torn down those neighborhoods and the city council has had to take action and the police department has also. If we have an area where we could put affordable housing, fine, but not in the general community. Thank you. And now our next question will go to uh, Jeannie Bruins, James Remick, and James Ayala. Okay. Do you support the proposed sales tax increase to fund a new Sacramento arena in downtown? Please explain why or why not. Well, I have grave concerns about the proposal on, on multiple fronts. I do love the Kings. Um, I'd like to keep them in Sacramento but I find the current plan to be flawed. In particular in Citrus Heights, my concerns are um, multiple. One is that the formula that is being uh, offered to the cities for the tax revenue that we are going to get at some point in time is based on 4% net growth. And Citrus Heights has never experienced 4% net growth. We range between 1% and 2% net growth. Also, it puts us at a distinct disadvantage when um, people are considering shopping for large ticket items because it will, we, we abut Placer County, which already has a half a percent sales tax less, so it'll widen that gap. Third, there is no guarantee in the arena formula that um, will provide that income for cities. There's no deadline by which the arena needs to be built, and it's stated that their debt has to be paid before we get paid. Thank, Thank you. Thank you. And James Remick? Well, I'd like to, um, to look at it from a different perspective. Um, I have my wife and my three small children. And for us to go downtown, it would probably cost us about $600 to see the Kings play. Now, I'm a police officer and my wife's a teacher. So there's no way that my family can afford to go see the Sacramento Kings play and support two billionaires in their venture downtown. And I have a sneaky suspicion that all the citizens of Citrus Heights feel the same way. So in answer to the question, I do not support increasing our sales tax and making us less competitive with the neighboring county to provide an entertainment that most of us cannot afford. Thank you. And James Ayello. I'm with Mr. Rennick. I'm totally against the increase in sales tax. Number one, we get no benefit from it. The city of Sacramento does, but not the city of Citrus Heights, Elk Grove, or Rancher Cordova. This is nothing but a ploy by the city of Sacramento to make more money. It has nothing to do with citrus heights or any of the surrounding communities. Thank you. And Lakeisha, the next question will be answered by Steve Miller, Laura Taylor, and James Remick. Okay. 
Citrus Heights has opened a new police department. Some complaints received by the B are that the department is too aggressive in enforcing traffic citations. Do you think this is true? And what is your response to that complaint? My response is slow down when you enter Citrus Heights. We have had before the police department was formed uh, in the past year, I believe 14 fatalities related to traffic. Since our new rollout in uh, June of uh, this year, We've had no traffic fatalities, and I've noticed that the traffic has slowed down. Uh, if you don't want a ticket in Citrus Heights, slow down. Obey the traffic laws. Stop at the stop signs. This is what we asked of our police department. I heard a funny story from the chief that uh, we had a woman citizen complain about the speeders on her street, so they sent someone out at 6 in the morning, and she was the first one they caught. Thank you. Laura? Well, I thank God that they are out being aggressive in the traffic. Um, I'll share a personal story with you. Um, I work part-time at my children's school, and um, this year the school had hired a new teacher who moved to Citrus Heights to live there with her family, her young daughter, her young husband, and she was broadsided by a truck on Van Maren. She still is in intensive care in a coma and is still trying to recover and her family and the community and our school is continuing to pray for her health. I thank God that our police department is aggressive in pursuing traffic citations because if they don't, we may all end up in much worse situation than we are right now. I think it's a wonderful thing. I think they should keep up the good work and I think Steve Miller is correct. We need to all slow down. Thank you. And James? I already tipped my hat that I, I'm in law enforcement myself, and Citrus Heights has an extreme traffic problem. It's one of our biggest issues that we deal with on a day-to-day -day basis. Um, it seems like Citrus Heights is the crossroads of Sacramento County. We have the busiest intersections, and we have a tremendous amount of traffic accidents in last year, 14 fatalities. It was imperative when we made the decision to come to develop our own police department to focus on traffic for the safety of our families. Um, I would um, disagree with those individuals that say that there is too much traffic enforcement. I would um, take the other side of that and say that we actually need more. And I would encourage our police department to get out there and enforce those rules. And I'll piggyback on what the other two said. Slow down. Thank you. Now let's have a question that all our candidates will answer. So let me see. That order will be Jeannie Bruins, James Remick, Steve Miller, James Aiello, and Laura Taylor. And I'll remind you if you forget the order. What do you consider the most pressing issue facing Citrus Heights and why? Jeannie. Well, I'm going to go back to my former statement that we need to um, address the progress of our business community. We've had a great good fortune in the last 10 years in having um, more than adequate income to address the needs of our community. We've been able to build a $35 million reserve and remain debt free. In order to maintain that, that level of financial security, we need to increase revenue to keep the demands of a growing community. And so therefore, I believe it is incumbent upon this council to work with our business community to assure the future of Citrus Heights while we maintain prudent fiscal financial um, practices to, to keep ourselves ahead of the growing demands of cost. Thank you. Thank you. And James? I think the largest single problem that Citrus Heights currently has is image. Why is it that our median home price is the lowest in the area? The city of Folsom, the unincorporated area of Carmichael, Fair Oaks, the city of Roseville, Orangevale, all of these areas maintain a higher, substantially higher, median household value and I relate that back to um, you know our schools are not good at this point we need to improve our schools for our children and 
the, the environment in general needs to be improved in our city for our businesses to allow us to, um, to grow, grow as a city. It's strange to me that a brand new city such as Rancho Cordova is just increasing in numbers exponentially and we're still lagging behind and the Sacramento Bee producing numbers or publishing numbers that make our sales tax revenue look like we're not competitive. We need to do a better job. Thank you. Steve? Well, sales tax is our ec economic engine. And in order to invest in our infrastructure, improve our roads, improve our traffic, improve our streets, and improve our quality of life and thereby raise our, our property values, we really need to in invest in our businesses and secure uh, an, a sales tax growth that has been flat over the last three years. Our economic strategic plan has not been updated since 1999. I think it's time to take a look at our strengths, weaknesses, opportunities, and threats. We need to take a new look at job growth, sales activities, and real estate and come up with a plan that encourages redevelopment through public and private investment in our business districts and improvements to our city's infrastructure. And I think our Chamber of Commerce needs to play a role in partnership with the city in attracting new businesses, especially nationally renowned retailers. Thank you. James? Ayello? In my opinion, we have to get away from the, the landlords and the developers and start thinking about the citizens of Citra sites. Mr. Rennick, uh, Mr. Miller is right. We have to start promoting business, give them special favors as need be to get the sales tax up. Get away from, from building anything for at least a year until, until we, we get our profits up. That's enough. Thank you. Mm. Laura? Well, I think our single biggest issue is quality of life. And that's kind of just a big encompassing term that takes in a lot of what we've just heard. Specifically, though, um, I'm concerned about what's happening with our school district. We have heard over and over again that we have declining enrollment. And yet, we are a built-out city. Citrus Heights is a built-out community. And Citrus Heights is the only demographic area within the San Juan Unified School District that has had consistent increase in enrollment, and yet our schools are closing. Our quality of life for our seniors is being threatened by profit taking from greedy landlords. And we need to stand up for our seniors, and we need to support them. So our quality of life is probably the most important issue, and everything we do as a city council has an impact on that. Thank you. And let's have a question now that will go to three of our candidates. And um, we'll be starting with James, then Laura, and Steve. It's James. James uh, Remick, sorry. Yes, too many James. <laughs> okay. How would you work with the city's new police chief to address public safety issues? James Remick. I would encourage the um, police chief to do exactly what he's doing now. Um, he's on the right track, and we have a very positive outcome so far. Um, crime is down tremendously across the board with our, with our current, um, I think, 12 or 13 week old police department. It's incredible what they've done to this point. I would like to say, though, that our numbers of cops on the street is excessively low if you compare it to the surrounding areas. Uh, Roseville has a almost double percentage of police officers on the street. I think once we realize the importance of maintaining an appropriate level of police protection, our community will thrive and succeed in a much fast, at a much, much faster pace. Thank you. Thank you. Laura? Well, I believe Chief Boyd has um, done a phenomenal job um, coming in and hitting the ground running. I am absolutely thrilled with his choice of, of senior staff, of his commanders. We have got a wonderful group of dedicated law enforcement staff. Um, my only concern is that 
our police department needs to remember to stay in touch with the neighborhoods. And I believe that through our community-oriented policing programs, through our neighborhood officers, and through the chief himself being out in the community, supporting the BEAT meetings, continuing the successful actions of our previous department, that is how I would encourage him as a city council member and support him in that way. Thank you. Steve? We've been truly blessed in getting the best of the best. Chief Boyd has hired from 92 jurisdictions from throughout the state, and we have a great mix of law enforcement experience that it averages around 11 years, which is just unheard of this in any police department. And they have really done a great job connecting with the community. I have voted to ensure every time he's asked for the latest and the best technology to help fight crime, drugs, and the infiltration of gangs to our community. And we have reduced speeding and reduced traffic-related injuries, and we have not had any deaths. So I, I think it's been a very effective uh, formation in the short time. It's just amazing that we got a police department up and rolling. Well, Chief Boyd was, has only been with us since January, and he got the police department on the streets in six months. Just phenomenal job, and I support him wholeheartedly. Thank you. Our next question should be directed to James Aiello, James Remick, and Jeannie Bruins. The city recently voted against a rent control ordinance for mobile home parks. Please explain your position on rent control for mobile home parks and rent control in general. Is, I'm, I'm totally for rent control in certain areas. Uh, we've got landlords moving in from San Francisco because they've, they've upped all the costs there. They can't do anything anymore, so they're coming here and in prying on Sacramento County and Citrus Heights. If we need rent control, then make it rent control. You stop raising rents uh, without the council's permission. I'm totally for rent control, as long as it's rent control and nothing else. Thank you. James? In reference to the current problem that we're having in Citrus Heights regarding the mobile home parks, um, I don't think the issue at hand, the rent, con rent control to me is, a, is pretty much a, it's a dirty word. It's, it's government interceding into a, um, a situation that they shouldn't be in. But the situation that we have in Citrus Heights right now is, um, is different. It seems as if we have some predatory um, land developers that have um, come into our city that don't live here, they're not part of our community, and it seems like they're going to put their money in and pull their money out. I don't see any advantages to, um, to supporting their, um, their seeming need to double a senior's rent in a mobile home park, going from $450 a month up to $750 a month. Um, is something that none of us, anybody in the city would, could handle, okay? So Thank my you. position on it would be that I would have voted yes for the ordinance. Thank you. Jeannie. Well, I am so sorry I am unable to answer this question because recently it was determined that I live within 500 feet of a mobile home park and I have been conflicted out. So I, um, regretfully need to pass on this question. Thank you. Um, the next question will be answered by James Aiello, Jeannie Bruins, and Steve Miller. Do you favor more regional participation or joining with other cities for economic development and transportation improvements? Why or why not? James. Basically, no, for several reasons. Our uh, rapid transit has done nothing for Citrus Heights except to get, take money from us. We get a certain amount of transportation money from the state of California every year. We've done nothing to get that to, to transportation, and they've done nothing for us except furnish a few buses. They at no time have tried to put in light rail or any other implement that would help us. I'm for actually stopping rapid transit and putting in our own transportation district. 
Jeannie? Well, I do believe we should, and I do believe we do. Um, each of your council members has a seat on various regional boards that address transportation issues and economic development. As much as we are, we will always have our own citizens as our primary focus and our primary concern, that doesn't mean that life stops at the borders of our cities. I serve on the SACOG board, which is the Sacramento Area Council of Governments, as have uh, my predecessors. We also have representation on transportation board. It would be foolish for us to think that transportation issues that ex uh, exist outside of Citrus Heights don't have an impact on us. So while we, we focus and address our concerns for our own local community, that includes being a participant on a regional level so that we could all come together to solve regional issues around economic development and transportation. Thank you, and Steve. Well, I'm concerned. We've been talking about uh, improving transportation uh, regionally since there was, well, I'm kidding, but two houses out in Lincoln. And the same proposals are still in front of us. We've been strong on, on plans, but weak on action. And that's when I'm elected, I intend to uh, work on a regional level. Citrus Heights seems to have gotten the short end of the stick when it comes to light rail. It dead ends at, at Watt and really doesn't serve a purpose. Uh, downtown Sacramento is, is proposing an intermodal rail station, and we have no way of getting there. One thing I'm looking at is working with Caltrans and the Joint Powers Authorities with, uh, on uh, the Capitol Corridor to provide a rail stop at Citrus Heights that would serve Antelope and Citrus Heights and get us downtown into points further like the Bay Area. Thank you. And Lakeisha, this next question will be answered by Laura Taylor, James Remick, and James Aiello. The San Juan Unified School District, which serves Citrus Heights, has closed several schools in the past few years. Do you think Citrus Heights should have a greater role or relationship with the school district? If so, what should that role be? If not, why? It's a very good question, and it kind of dovetails on some of the things I've already said. Um, I do believe that Citrus Heights needs to have a greater voice with the San Juan School District and the San Juan Superintendent. Um, we are seeing some very positive changes. Um, we've, we've suffered from declining enrollment, poor management practices, but uh, there's, a, there's a new guy in town. And Mr. Enoch has got a bold plan to make some changes. However, in that plan, the city of Citrus Heights is not figuring in prominently. And I think we need to actively advocate for our parents, for our students, to strengthen the schools in Citrus Heights. Um, the San Juan District has typically been um, not favorable to charter schools, and yet many charter schools provide superior opportunities for our students. In fact, we had uh, one particular charter school in Citrus Heights which was moved out of our area by the San Juan Unified School District and is now being threatened to move again. I need to see something better from the San Juan District, and as a council member, I'll make sure it gets done. Thank you. James? As a father of three young children, I've been um, mortified over the years on the decline of the San Juan Unified School District and how they treat the schools in Citrus Heights. Um, I look for a day when people can be proud to say that they go to school in our city. I would like to give the opportunity for the new superintendent intended to um, hopefully improve our situation, but I'm not convinced that he will be able to do so since he has, like Laura said, left us out of the picture in, in a lot of areas. We have no new schools. We're, our, our campuses are declining in, in disrepair and when our children say where they go, you, you almost get a raised eyebrow from you know the people that you socialize with, and they're like, oh, how is that? So I'm looking forward to um, having a voice and encouraging an active role of not only the city council, but every parent in our city to force the San Juan Unified School District to pay attention to the city of Citrus Heights. Thank you. James? I used to be an administrator for a school district. I was director of transportation and risk management. One of the things I learned about school districts is they really don't care what the citizens want. 
they only care about what they want. And uh, Citrus Sites is, is part of that now with the school district. We should have some say, as Los Angeles did, in how we hire our, the school district superintendent and some say in what the board does so that we can improve our schools and Citrus Sites. Thank you. And Lakeisha, this question will be answered by Steve Miller, Jeannie Bruins, and Laura Taylor. Do you think Citrus Heights is taking the right steps to be financially stable for the future? Why or why not? Well, I do think we're taking the right steps. Uh, we have a unique model of our government where the bureaucracy is flat. We have a city manager, department heads, and then the folks that implement uh, and do the work. And it's, so it's not this huge bureaucracy. And I'm very proud of our finance director, Susan Mahoney. She's constantly doing a 10-year look ahead to make sure that we're financially viable to the year 2022 when we receive our property taxes. And one of the concerns, and getting back to the mobile home issue, and I may not be able to address it completely, but that was my biggest concern with uh, going forward with an ordinance was that it was going to threaten uh, the financial soundness of our city and the only ones that would profit from it were the attorneys at the expense of our seniors. Thank you. Jeannie? Well, I wholeheartedly support the direction that our city began 10 years ago and continues to go forward with because I believe in sound fiscal, conservative fiscal policies. We knew from the onset that we were not going to be getting our property tax for a period of 25 years and that we had to not only support current services but to continue to improve services and grow without that benefit. As a result, our city has set a 10-year model in place for budgeting, almost unheard of in a municipal government. Every year we revisit that model and we improve upon it and we update it. We've also taken very strong fiscal steps, which was the main reason behind going with our own police department to, to assure that that fiscal soundness remains in place, to push forward the crossover point where we do have to use part of our reserves. Now it's just within a matter of a couple of years before the 25 year time clock ends and we get our property tax back. So I think we have very sound financial uh, policies and I support them 100%. Thank you. Laura? I would agree that we have, to some extent, laid out a good fiscal plan. However, that plan starts to draw down on our reserves in the year 2012. And in fact, we are not just a few years away from getting our property taxes. We are waiting until the year 2021. That's a little bit farther away. So. My concern is, what are we going to do? Are we going to be faced with taxing the people of Citrus Heights at some point? I don't agree with that. I think we need some creativity. We've got a fantastic finance director, as, as Steve said, and Susan Mahoney. She's highly competent. And I believe that with the direction of a good city council, we can make a difference for the finances for the future of this city. Thank you. Now I'm going to uh, direct a question to all five candidates in the order of Jeannie Bruins, James Remick, Steve Miller, James Aiello, and Laura Taylor. And it is your opportunity to answer a question that was not addressed to you or a question that uh, you would have liked to have addressed if it had been posed. So Jeannie. Well, the question that was um, posed earlier that I was unable to answer was the question about whether or not I would support helping business in Citrus Heights. And my answer to that question is yes. I believe that um, to move forward, we, continue, we need to continue to partner with our business community as well as other entities. And if we have an opportunity to help make an investment in our community that will provide additional services to our residents who are, who are our ultimate concern here, then if those policies are prudent, well thought out, and proved to be financially viable, then I would, I would support that. I believe that our business community is part of our citizenry in that they are not um, 
an, an entity only of themselves that, that do not interact with our people. So in order to continue to provide services that enhance our quality of life for our citizens, we need to keep our businesses viable, and I'm prepared to help do that. Thank you. James? I'd like to speak to the the question that we had on the previous question about how I felt about the direction our city has taken. Um, I think our city has made um, some baby steps in the right direction over the last 10 years. Um, I still am concerned as to why the areas around Citrus Heights, all of the communities are thriving and we are maintaining a flat line. So I can't really say that I'm that I'm necessarily pleased and nor should you be with our current direction. That's why I'm advocating change on the council to feed some fresh ideas and a fresh look at our situation so that we can look to the future and succeed as a community. Thank you. Steve? Well, Mr. Remick's correct. The issues really never change and it always includes public safety, traffic, our blighted neighborhoods, and the threat of commercial developments in their neighboring communities. And we can face these issues today, but it will require the cooperation of our city's citizens, our businesses, and commercial property owners, and we need to form a visionary plan to invest in our business districts, our roads, and our neighborhoods. We need to become a city that's a destination for new home ownership, entertainment venues, and retail opportunities. And I've also, something that we haven't talked about today is I have a passion to see that we create a community center where we can come together in many different ways. This includes a meeting place for our businesses with trade shows and seminars and a facility for fundraisers by our service organizations and a place for the arts. I envision a center that is self-supporting through multi-use approach that would incorporate an outdoor amphitheater Thanks. for revenue generating musical and theater events. Thank you. Thank you. And James. I want to get back to uh, low income housing. There, it, it has a lot of names, but it actually all it is is minority housing for poor. Because of that, we have over 200 fed pedophiles in citrus sites. We have, three, uh, we have three black gangs, one Mexican gang, one Russian, and one Armenian gangs. They're all very deadly. That's all due to uh, minority housing. We have, the police department has to get put that to a stop if they can, but we've got to think about minority housing very carefully before we approve it. Thank you, Laura. Well, one question that I was not posed but I would like to comment on is transportation. Um, I have had the pleasure of traveling the city with my two small children on the neighborhood bus, and actually they're big fans of the neighborhood bus. It's one of the wonderful outgrowths of our partnership with the regional transit. Unfortunately, it stops at the border of Citrus Heights, and we have seniors that use this transportation very well and very often but they can't get to Kaiser. They can't cross the border into Roseville. So regional participation and regional planning in transportation is huge and it has huge impacts on our community if we can't successfully do it. I agree that we need to have a voice. We need to have more public transit access into our community through light rail and through other mass transit opportunities so that we can reduce the number of cars on the street, reduce the pollution in our air, make our community safer, less vehicles on the road. But I think we've got to do it regionally. It's not something that we can just sit in a closet and do all by ourselves. Thank you. Thank you. Akisha, I think we have time for a short a question that will elicit a short answer from our um, candidates, maybe a 30-second one, and that will allow us to finish sort of right on time. Okay. Uh, and I will direct it to all of the candidates, and I think I'll just start from my left, and we'll just go around like that. Okay. Um, Citrus Heights has a program for prioritizing streets for road improvements. Do you support the city's current street improvement program? Why or why not? Steve? Well, I do support it, 
it is based on the condition or actually the, the as how bad the street is and is prioritized that way. It's, in other words, how long it, it's been since it's been paved. Now, unfortunately, and we have a program each year where we repave our streets, but um, each year the same amount of money goes, doesn't go as far, but we are continuing to uh, get through our neighborhoods and pave the roads that haven't been paved in sometimes 36 years by the County of Sacramento. Thank you. Laura? This is an issue that um, was brought up to me at Sunday Funday a number of times. And I can tell you, uh, as a recipient of the overlay project from last year, I was dismayed to find that my cul-de-sac was on the list for this year. And when I talked to city staff and asked them why, they said, oh, well, because city staff goes out and does a visual survey. So I would have to say, no, I'm not in agreement with the way that they're currently administering the overlay program. I think that we need something a little bit more concrete, apparently, than just a visual survey because it's not getting us what we need. In my community, we still have not had completion of the ADA ramps from a year ago. Thank you. Jeannie? The ability to do um, road improvements is directly tied to the ability to fund them. And there are very difficult choices that need to be made because there's always more work to be done than the funding, than there is funding available to do it. I think our city has taken a comprehensive approach to street uh, maintenance and improvements. I've seen work taken place that never occurred when we were part of the unincorporated area of the county. The process can always be improved upon and our staff continues to look at that and do it. So I do support the efforts we're taking. Thank you. James? Well, actually, Laura Taylor has said everything that I need to say, so I'll pass on to James. Well, that is definitely within the 30-second oh, time frame, so thank you. <laughs> well, my position on this is um, kind of self-serving. My road hasn't been paved yet, um, so I'm looking forward to the day that that happens. Um, I have been a bit puzzled in regards to um, the selection process of our roads. It seems like we're selecting cul-de-sacs and dead-end type streets and um, not taking um, a perspective of taking care of our through fares and our and our common use roadways. I, I think all of our common use roadways and through fares should be um, surfaced before any cul-de-sac. Thank you. Thank you. Um, that concludes the question and answer portion of our forum and now we're going to move to <coughs> closing statements. Again, one minute closing statements from our candidates and we will start with James Remick. What I'd like to, you to take from this um, forum here from me is that I am committed, I'm full of integrity, and you will always get the truth from me. I'm not going to be a polished politician sitting up in an ivory tower making myself look good or making myself sound important. I will be the voice and the truth for the citizens of Citrus Heights. I make a living as a peace officer and my job is, reflects the same philosophies I just stated. And I hope to build a safe and profitable and wonderful community for my family and yours to grow and thrive. Thank you very much. Thank you. Our next closing statement will be given by James Aiello. The city council is controlled by property owners and developers who have no interest in the citizens of Citrus Sites. I intend to make the citizens' interest my only concern. The best thing that can be done to immediately improve the quality of life in Citrus Sites is not to re-elect the incumbents. It's time for a positive change. That's mine. Thank you. Our next closing statement will be given by Jeannie Bruins. It's been my pleasure and my honor to serve Citrus Heights as a council member and the mayor this year over the last four years. During that time, I have participated in, in many uh, capacities outside of just being a council member. I represent Citrus Heights on the Sacramento Regional County Sanitation Board and on SACOG. I've had a role in selecting school principals and the new school superintendent. Because of the vote that I gave on our law enforcement issue, crime is down 46% in Citrus Heights. Traffic injuries are down 70%. 
We now have a community center on our most troubled street in Citrus Heights on Sayonara, serving the children there with an after school and tutoring program. I have been shown to be a leader within the region. I take exception to the issue that the image is not good in Citrus Heights. People tell me repeatedly that this is a place that they would like to live. They talk constantly about the differences they see based on what it once was and what it is. And I look forward to the opportunity to continue to serve this community for four more years. Thank you. Thank you. And our next closing statement will be given by Laura Taylor. Thank you. As your council member, I will work to provide greater long-term financial stability, improve public services, protect the quality of life for our seniors and families, and preserve the rural residential character of our city while supporting the viability of our local businesses that add to the strength of our community. In closing, I would like to encourage the voters of Citrus Heights to carefully review the candidates' ballot statements. I encourage you to visit the League of Women Voters website at smartvoter.org to learn more about me and to help you make an informed decision on November 7th. Thank you very much for your time and attention. God bless Citrus Heights. Thank you. Thank you. And our last closing statement will be provided by Steve Miller. Thank you. Uh, thank you first to uh, Ms. McGee and Ms. Finney for uh, conducting this forum, and I am deeply honored to serve on your city council, but I'm also profoundly aware of the responsibility I've been given. I've gained the experience necessary, and I've built strong relationships with our local, state, and national leaders. I'm endorsed by Assemblyman Nilo and County Supervisor Roberta McLassen, among others. And I've worked hard for Citrus Heights in a number of capacities, and I'm proud of our accomplishments. I have a passion to serve and keep Citrus Heights a great place to live. I appreciate your support during my tenure as your council member, and I look forward to providing experienced leadership on your city council for years to come. Thank you for your vote on November 7th. Thank you. On behalf of the League of Women Voters and the Sacramento Metropolitan Cable Television Commission, I thank our candidates, James Remick, James Aiello, Jeannie Bruins, Laura Taylor, Thank you. and Steve Miller. Thank you. And our panelists, Lakeisha McGee from the Sacramento Bee. Thank you all for participating. I'd also like to thank all our volunteers who have made this forum pos possible. This forum has been designed to impart information to you, the voter, in accordance with our belief that a democratic government depends upon the informed and active participation of its citizens. We hope the insights that you have gained from this forum will help you in making your decision this election time. For voter information and rebroadcast times, please, as Laura said, go see our league um, website, www.smartvoter.org. And also, this, this forum will be rebroadcast every Sunday um, until election day. So please vote on November 7th and help make our democracy work. Thank you.